That's fine. There we go. Just activated it. <laughs> but, but like I said, is as God is good though. We want to keep our brothers and sisters in prayer, like uh, Giuseppe's dad, uh, Tim. I'm not. I'm not at liberty to say what's going on with Tim, but um, that's definitely brother Tim. Um, Tabby, her family. There's a lot of spiritual and medical battles going on. So. I pray for everybody every day. <laughs> Just the last couple nights, I've been falling asleep before evening prayer. And then I wake yeah. up at three o'clock in the morning. And it's all to do with this smoke coming down from the mountain. It's really wiped me out. <clears throat> but how's it been going over in your neck of the woods? Today's been a nice day. We had a little cold front come in. So we got down to 56 last night. Oh, wow. So I got my, I left my fans on. I haven't, I haven't used my air conditioner in over a week. So I've enjoyed that. Yeah, that's got to be nice. Just so I cool, mellow air. That's. And it's been rained. It rained a few days last week. We had some thunderstorms, but we haven't had anything serious. Every time they had a tornado, it's always gone east. And we haven't had any severe storms at least. So praise God. Praise God. So. Yeah, and I always like, try to watch the weather like three or four times a week just to know what's going on with everybody where they live and what's you know, if there's tornadoes, if there's severe threats, I usually pray every day for if I know there's tornadoes or whatever's going on in the country. Definitely, definitely. And it's just like we've had some wicked thunderstorms and heavy rains. And God knows we need it here. This area yeah. has severe drought. And We've had our road closed even just right a hundred yards from my driveway because the end of the road completely flooded. And it's okay. a time in two years that it flooded like that. And, but you know, that's why when I do the same thing when it comes to prayer is I always make sure that I'm praying for those people that are affected by tornadoes and storms. I guess one went through um, brother in Christ's area. And I pray okay. God to, God protected him from it. He had trees down. But yeah. <laughs> I'd rather have trees down than a house gone. Yeah. And knowing that they're safe. And that's my big worry, you know, is my brothers and sisters, are they okay? Are the tornadoes coming into their neighborhood? But yeah, it's just been watching the way things go. And then here, my job, yeah, it's official but unofficial, but they put me as maintenance lead and okay. without the title on my paycheck. <laughs> but I'm basically <laughs> leading two other guys now. They after nine months straight of and there's no other word for it, pure hell at work. <laughs> not, not having any help and them just constantly beating on me about getting things finished and caught up. And I look at him, I says, I can't do part-time helpers. We need full-time maintenance. I yeah. so much for one person. And if you keep this up, I'm going to turn you in for health issues. And they finally got the hint. Because I said, you guys are causing people heart attacks and stress that's unnecessary on their bodies. And they finally approved it this last week. And we've got two full-time now with me. So I've got two full-timers. So... It, it it was a godsend this week, I'll tell you, because my lungs were hurting with all this smoke. And we've gotten so much accomplished, it was like, praise God, finally. I could see daylight at the end of it, you know? Yeah. Getting things fixed and cleaned and straightened up on the property. So. But, um, do you have any extra special requests tonight? No, I just basically been praying for the same thing. Just for people to be saved and I think God's just really touching my heart. I've just been spending a lot more time. I've been getting up earlier, so I've been having more quiet time in the morning. That time to meditate with God, yeah. And the weather's been real nice. So I feed what's funny is I started feeding the cats outside about a year ago and this summer the birds so half the food the birds eat, but it, some of them they come like almost to the front door. So I watch the birds all day, and some of them are pretty beautiful. 
to see him. That's good meditation. That's really good meditation. You know? And the other day, I even seen a Cardinal show up, and I was all excited. I was like, wow. <laughs> I don't see those very often. Yeah, they're kind and of. I don't even leave my front door. It's all brought to my front doorstep, so I don't have to move out the chair to see it. <laughs> you could just sit there and relax and meditate with God's yeah. word and prayer and see his creation come up and say hi to you. That's a blessing. So it's always nice. Yeah, it's, it's a blessing when we can have the animals and stuff around us, you know? And, everyone's and I have two cats that come and eat once in a while outside and you probably got some squirrels and raccoons and everything out there yeah before all the trailers i live in a mobile home park so before it got full, filled up there used to be a couple of geese that would fly over here and they get pretty close to my trailer gotcha and that you could always hear them because there's a pond or something behind where i live and i can always hear them when they, they make noise i can tell it's them but i never see them anymore oh got you yeah. You know. And it's then sometimes sweet. early in the morning the coyotes you can hear them in the field across the street. Nice, nice. So yeah. here we have grackles, which are the long tailed blackbirds. Okay. Yeah, they're a long tail, they're of the raven and crow family. Yeah. Okay. And they're a real long tailed blackbird. And okay. Oh, I've got a set of them that's been following me around ever since we stayed in Bennett. They wound up over here. And I was at work the other day, and they were sitting on the fence. <laughs> and it was him and her. I could tell because every time I went somewhere on the property, they'd fly over to me. Uh, that's cool. And they're, they're just like I said, like a raven and a crow. They always remember people. If yeah. They, if people are nice to them, they'll follow them. And it's just beautiful to have those kind of animals that follow you around. Even though they're wild, they'll still follow you and see if you've got something for them. <laughs> yeah. it's pretty cute because there's blackbirds and there's small birds and the middle sized birds and the big birds and it's like they all take turns when it's time to eat they line up and one will come down and then take off and the next one they'll just go in line and then they'll get their food and leave yep and that's what's cool about it you know you know yeah. so I go through a little bit more cat food than I've been used to but it's alright <laughs> yeah that's something you will <laughs> But it's just cute <laughs> watching them come down and then they all get in a line to eat. Yeah. It's like Jimmy's bread line. <laughs> yeah. But, but yeah, we'll just give it a couple more minutes and then we'll go ahead and start in prayer. <clears throat> uh, but yeah, no, like I said, is this, with me being half native, Jimmy, it's amazing how I can feel the animal spirits when they when they recognize you. Yeah. And you just like, I have, feel like one's watching me and I turn around and sure enough, there he is with her. Those two, they're, they're just like, I felt something watching me. I turn around and there they were sitting on the fence right above me. The... And it's just like, it's just beautiful to see that. Thing. And I've got birds here where we live that do the same thing. Every year, these starlings, these barn starlings, they all do the same thing. They'll follow me around out here. And then the my wife with the chicken, she's a chicken turkey whisperer. Uh, yeah, Crystal's a chicken turkey whisperer. <laughs> she has these birds here so trained that they know exactly what she's going to tell them to do, and, and they do it. I mean, literally, she can make them go into the um, barn to be counted without having to <laughs> yell at them. She just goes, it's time. Yeah. Up and they walk, start walking to the barn. Like, yeah, so we call her the turkey whisperer. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. And that's what's funny about it. So, all right, let's go ahead and get this minimized so I can have that one at the ready. All right. So what I'm going to do is we'll all go ahead and open up in prayer, Jimmy. <clears throat> oh, Heavenly Father, we just thank you and praise you for the time to fellowship. Time to study your word, O oh God, and to learn and glean your knowledge and your wisdom over our own, O oh God. Let us not privately interpret your word, but have your word speak for itself, O oh God. Lord, we lift up our brothers and sisters that are battling health issues like pneumonia, strokes, cancer, migraines, blindness, both physical and spiritual, and oppressive 
behaviors, Lord. Deliver them from these oppressive behaviors and demonic behaviors. Deliver them from this world, oh God. Give them strength and courage to step out of it and to step into your word, oh Lord, and into your glory. Give them strength to become set apart for your glory, oh God. We ask this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Yeah. Ooh, hallelujah. And I believe we left off there in 1 Thessalonians 4.1 last week. Okay. I believe that's where we left off. Yeah, and to quietly follow their own business, I remember that. Hmm. I was trying to remember where we left off last week and my Bible study software just opened to it. <laughs> it's nice when it does that. <laughs> it's a good scripture to start on. It really is. <laughs> so where are we going to do that? Uh, we're going to... We're going to start at 4-1, 1 Thessalonians 4-1. Okay. We're going to go back over this this right here real quick. And then... Bible. Yeah. No problem. Four one, you said. Yep. All right. You just let me know when you're ready, brother. <laughs> I'm ready. All right, awesome. Let's look right here. It says, "Furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as ye have received of us, how ye ought to walk and to please God, so ye would abound more and more." For ye know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor, not in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles, which know not. Go ahead, Crystal. Oh, Just tell him the only people. Okay. Hey, Jimmy. Yeah. Have your mic off uh, when you're in, unless you're going to speak. Okay. Because it's echoing, I guess, Crystal said. She's in there. <laughs> yep, Crystal's in. Okay. I'm going to also move my mic to see if that helps. I apologize. No, it's not so bad. Okay, I moved the mic closer to me. It might have been me, Jimmy. <laughs> no, it, I speak. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. All right. And I don't even have my speaker. Really. I know you have headphones on. All right. So let me go back over this again. Here, we see two things here on this chapter and right here. Furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you. By the Lord Jesus, that as ye have received of us, how ye ought to walk and to please God, ye would abound more and more. For ye know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor, not in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles, which know not God. And I'm going to mute my mic, Jimmy, and I'm going to let you say something about that. What, um, what it means about concupiscence, the lust of concupiscence. What does that word mean? Okay, let me pull that up for you. Because I believe it's laziness. Or Okay. Just let me look here, but I want to make sure I don't want to misquote it. It's been a while since I've even thought, sorry, you've seen it, so... A strong sexual desire, lust. Okay. Hmm. 
you go ahead and uh, think about that there, Jimmy, and tell us what it means. Well, the only thing it take, draws me to feed my spirit, because if I'm not feeding the lust of the flesh, then I'm not going to have those desires to fornicate or any of those sexual desires to go against God's will for my body. Because it possesses his vessel in sanctification and honor. Exactly, exactly. Amen. It's exactly it. If you keep your mind focused on Christ, like you said, 100%, you're not going to have that strong sexual desire of the world. And so we're going to go over to 1 John 1 9. 1 John 1 9. If I can get my uh, Bible software to work for me today, there we go. That's the key scripture. Okay, I'm ready. All right. So what we see here is, and it's actually going to be verse five that we're going to start at. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light and he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. And this goes back to being set apart. And anyway, if we live as sinners under grace, and a lot of people will say, well, well, you've already been sanctified, so how can you be a sinner? Well, it doesn't say that we aren't a sinner. It says we are sinners saved by grace or under grace. And that is part of being set apart, part of being sanctified, is to acknowledge that it's not anything you did personally, but what Christ did for you. And I know we talked about Jesus sweating drops of blood or white blood plasma in the garden last week, Jimmy. Yeah. And that's exactly it. I mean, if Christ, if that's, if, I mean, I've been there. I've been praying where I've gotten heat stroke. And this is the kind of thing. If Christ can pray like that, why can't we, you know? Hmm. Is it still echoing, Crystal? Okay, that's probably what it is. No, because your mic is so close to the computer. Yeah, I pushed it all the way back. So, no, because it's right next to the computer. That's why. Okay, guy. Oh, okay. So, what we're going to go next, and I want you guys to look at here in uh, John 17 19. Now we're like I said, we're jumping all over the New Testament here tonight, just so we can catch this. Okay. Yeah. And it's actually going to be 17, 18, and 19 is what we're going to look at. And it says right here, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world, and for their saints, sakes, that I can talk, I sanctify myself that they might they also might be sanctified through the truth. Mm. Mm. That is powerful. See how Christ says himself, he sets apart, he sets himself apart. Yep, I think I got one more person coming in. Yep. Ah, uh, there's Sister Bonita. Hello, Brother George. Yeah. I just got done eating dinner. Yeah, John chapter. Okay, Sister Bonita, we're on John 17, 17. Okay, I'll go to Paige. <laughs> Good to see you, Sister. <laughs> But like we were saying, though, while she's catching up there, Jimmy, um, 
you see here, he says, for their sakes. And a lot of people don't realize what he's talking about. It's for those that God has set apart. When he says for their sakes, he's talking about you, Benita, Crystal, I, and those that have accepted Christ's gift. So he's saying for their sakes, those are the ones that God has called out of this world, I sanctify myself. I set myself apart that they might, they also might be sanctified through the truth. Does that make sense to you, Jimmy? Yeah. <laughs> People don't realize that Christ said sanctification a lot. <laughs> we found that out in the John chapter 17. No, I was Oh, you went to the wrong chapter? Oh, the chapter before. Oh, okay. I was reading 17 and I was like, that's not right. But does it make sense to you, Crystal, now? About how Christ said that he... Uh, he I just lost my page there. I got to find it again. My uh, computer decided to minimize everything and pop up something else. <laughs> so many scriptures here. Once I find First Thessalonians again, I'll find where I was at. <laughs> what did you say? There was 122 scriptures? 113 main 113. Scriptures. Actually, I think we've only done one or two of the Old Testament ones so far, haven't we, Jimmy? I think so. Yeah, like I was saying, is ah, here we go, John 17, 19. Yeah, we just did that one. So I found my place. <clears throat> uh, let's go over to Exodus 31. Mm -hmm. That's a good book right after Genesis. Thirteen. Yep. Let me pop that out of the way so I can see it. That's what minimized the screen on me. <clears throat> Exodus 31. Right, right after Genesis. Let's go to the beginning of your Bible and then go to the next book. Okay. So, yep, 31 verse 13. And, and that's actually going to be at verse 12. I want to capture this here. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak thou also unto the children of Israel. Verily my Sabbath ye shall keep it, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations that ye may know that I am the Lord that doth sanctify you. And we did catch us, and I wanted to refresh since Benita had a sick child last week. Okay. So I wanted her to catch this on this video tonight. Is that Ye shall keep the Sabbath, therefore, for it is holy unto you. Everyone that defileth it shall be surely put to, be put to death. For whosoever doeth any work therein, thou shalt be cut off from among the people. But I wanted to keep that part where he says, I am the Lord that doth sanctify you. I mean, it, when we say work, it's basically running a business. And a lot of people don't understand. Some of us don't have a choice with the type of work we do. We have to work on Saturday. But there's such a thing as if you can avoid it, do it. <laughs> this a lot of this world doesn't recognize our Sabbath, right, Jimmy? Yeah. Unfortunate as it is, we can do our best to observe the Sabbath. But every day, is, if Christ fulfilled the law, every day can be a Sabbath. It's a day of remembrance of what God did for us. Mm. But if we go to Colossians 3 1, I believe it is. Yeah, let's go over to Colossians 3 1. And then, Benita, do you have any questions so far? No. 
I feel like I'm like making sense of it all. I know that was a huge video last week, so <laughs> yeah, I had it recorded too early. Uh, but um, we're gonna go to Colossians three one, Crystal. Oh. We come and Jimmy, here comes that word again. <laughs> I got to get a chuckle out of that word. <laughs> but if everybody's ready. Yeah. If ye then be risen it with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. And here's where we come to that word again. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience, in which ye also walked some time when you lived in them. But now ye also put off all these things, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication, why not one to another, seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. So <clears throat> we've um, already defined uh, concupiscence, uh, Benita, as lust, strong sexual desire, okay? So that's why I kind of chuckled there when I seen it again. I was like, hey, Jimmy, there's our word again. I don't forget what it means. Yeah, strong sexual desire. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I won't forget it either. It's just, uh, there's so many words in my head. Mm -hmm. But you see here where the blueprint is laid out that we are to be set apart from this world. And that's what sanctification really does. It sets us apart. And then we're going to go down to, let's find it here. Like I said, there's so many. There are 113 of these. But this one is a great one here. First Peter, Crystal. First Peter 2, verse 9. Hmm. Actually, I'm going to highlight that with the yellow highlighter, not the blue. If I can get my mouse to cooperate. Yeah, my mouse decided to <laughs> freeze on me. Two. We're going to go first, uh, Peter 2 4, just to start with. I wish it would have highlighted the whole. Scripture, not just part of it. That's going to make me do it individually. <clears throat> so, to whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed in need of men, but chosen of God and precious, ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house unholy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Sion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Unto you therefore which believe, 
he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner, and a stone of stumbling, and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. I like these descriptives, don't you, Crystal? A peculiar people, that ye should shew forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now I have obtained mercy. That's powerful, ain't it, Jimmy? Yeah. And, and, that, and I know we've all done it. We've all lived in sin. We've all fell short. We've all had those moments in life where we did what we wanted and didn't care about who we stepped on or kicked in the shins. And God has now changed that. And I like how he put it here in verse 10, which in time past were not a people. So we were just a bunch of useless sinners without a home, without a spiritual home. And we weren't a nation. There is such a thing as a Christian nation, and this is what he's calling it. The children of God are part of the Christian family and the Christian nation. And anytime you see the words, not a people, look at how cities are laid out. Look at how small towns and villages are laid out. And I'm going to pose this question to all of you guys. What happens to a town if everybody goes their own way? A big clash. Yeah. Wouldn't it, wouldn't it just, the town just fall apart and disappear? Well, we know they go to hell. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I agree. But this is the thing is, well, see, when Christ comes into us, we all join back up and we all, and if we're all Christian and we're in one accord, do you think that city could be defeated? No. That city is going to be so united on one purpose and that's to live for God, right? Yes. And that's exactly what he's saying here. You are set apart from the world. You are no longer an individual, but you are now part of Christ. I know every one of us had played with Chinese finger traps. And yes, I'm going to bring up Chinese finger traps for a reason. You get your fingers in them and sometimes you got to have somebody else push your fingers together and help you slide the trap off your finger. Well... We're going we're gonna to use that analogy that when we are truly in God's word and we're bound by God's word, you ain't getting that, those fingers apart. When they're connected together, when God has connected you properly to another brother or sister in Christ, there ain't going to be no Satan getting that finger trap apart, right? Or am I going off too far in bird walking? <laughs> oh, that's fine. I want to go over here. Because there's one part I missed on this, and I want you guys to hear it. Jude 124. Mm. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you 
faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God of our state, our God our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. But do you see what he said there? Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory. That defines sanctification well, don't it, Jimmy? Ooh. Wow. If we are focused on Christ, and I'm going to pose this question and anyone can answer it. If we are so focused on Christ and what Christ would have us do, do you think there would be a chance for Satan to convince us otherwise? Anyone can answer this. That's why I'm asking it. Say the first part again, Brother George. Okay. Knowing this right here in verse 24. Okay. okay. Knowing this, that we are already set apart and that we are studied and we keep our mind focused on God. Do you think Satan would truly have a chance to take us out of this? He doesn't have any power over us. He wouldn't, would he? Because we are sealed in what? The blood. The blood of Christ. What and what, let's let's look at the Passover for a moment. And I'm gonna mention the Passover for a reason. What did they do with the lamb's blood over on at the time to prevent the angel of death from taking the Israelite children? They put it around the door. Yeah, they put it around the door. Or the firstborns would die. Yeah. So even in the Old Testament, it talks about the blood of the lamb. And we can use it as a typology. And now Christ's blood covers us. So do you think the angel of hell is going to be able to persuade us to come from God? That's where a lot of people don't catch that, Bonita. Hebrews 10. Yep. We'll go over to Hebrews 10.10, 10, Crystal said. Okay. <laughs> Hebrews 10.10. 10. Yeah. She's ahead of me on that one. Yep, that's one of my, it's one of the ones we were going to talk about, Crystal. It's in my list. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's actually in the list that I've got. And it's been a week doing <laughs> that's actually accurate <laughs> amen by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all the Holy Ghost now I lost my place because you just did that <laughs> All, and every priest standeth daily ministering and offering on times the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God from henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. That is powerful, isn't it? But I yeah. don't missed it. But I want to continue into 14. <clears throat> That's what happened a minute ago. I seen a different one that drew me to. For by one offering, he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Whereof the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us. For after that he had said before, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds will I write them and their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Now where remission of these is there is no more offering for sin. 
It is exactly what we were just talking about with the Chinese finger trap, uh, trap analogy. You does that make sense, Sister Bonita? Yes, it does. Crystal jumped ahead of me somehow, and she don't even have the same list I'm on. <laughs> You didn't have the same list I'm working off of. I know that's what's comical. Yeah, let me look here. <laughs> you always bird walk. <laughs> Let's go over to Acts 20, verse 32. Hmm. Like I said, I'm going to send everybody this list if I haven't sent it to you guys already. So that way everybody has this list that they can do for their personal studies. Acts 20, verse 32. So let me know when everybody's ready. I'm ready. Get that to quit hovering on the screen. There we go. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all of them, all them which are sanctified. I have coveted no man's silver or gold or apparel. Yea, ye yourselves know that these hands have ministered unto my necessities and to them that were with me. I have hewed you all things, how that so laboring ye ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said it is more blessed to give than to receive. And you already heard me say it thousands of times, Jimmy, where they take this, uh, it's blessed to give that it is to receive or God loves a cheerful giver about the offering plate mentality for these prosperity, the prosperity theologists. Mm. This is what it truly means to be blessed to give than it is to receive is to share that sanctification with someone else and to share that love of Christ with someone else. It's blessed to give that love out versus the anger. And the hate and the animosity that you you take in, right? Yeah. So now we see the blessing to give. It's more blessed to give than to receive. Come into context. Here with Paul's writing here. And a lot of people don't catch that. Mm. So... Do you have any other scriptures, Jimmy, that you know of? Mm, I'm trying to think. I mean, the only ones I could, I don't know the scriptures, but I'm sure Paul talks a lot about it in his books, like keeping your body holy and clean. Yep. To be set up. Instead of you burn, it's better to marry than burn. Yep. You're talking about the lust ones. And there we go with that strong sexual lust, that concupiscence that we were talking about earlier. I think it's in, I think some of what I'm saying is in Romans, the scriptures in Romans, I believe it is. Yep. Let me look. What he said they gave them to unclean flesh. Yep. He gave them up to their own, un, their own, yeah, reprobates. <laughs> to, gave them up to a reprobate mind. Let me go over here. We're going to grab Romans real quick. I know one scripture is, I think it's Romans 12, 1 and 2, to set yourself apart from the world. I think yep. it is. I believe that might be it. That's yep. Sweet. Yep, you got it right off the bat, brother. <laughs> Amen. That's exactly, that's one of them. The IBC to you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed 
to this world. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what it what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And I like what he says here continuing. For I say through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we being many are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another. Here we go with that finger trap analogy again, Jimmy. <laughs> God yeah. has joined us together. Right. You're probably catching one I said last week. Seven, seven, fourteen. Yeah. I did that one last week, but we'll go ahead and go. First, yes. Did you do the first eleven? I've got a huge list. I've got 113 verses on sanctification, Crystal. But we'll go ahead and pull up 1 Corinthians 7. And you said 13. But it's actually verse 10. Oh, you want 1 Corinthians 7, 14. Okay. We're going to go to verse 10 in chapter 7. Okay. Of first Corinthians. No, no, it's fine. But the one you were talking about is right above it, Jimmy, in First Corinthians seven, in verse nine. Oh, okay, I get it. But if they cannot contain, let them marry, for it is better to marry than to burn. That's the one you were asking about, Jimmy. That was I I knew it was Paul, but I couldn't I re couldn't remember the scripture where it was at. There you go, right Thank there. You. But if they cannot continue, yeah, themselves, yeah, seven, nine. <laughs> there's that one. So you might want to write that one down, brother, because you had that one in your heart. Yeah, that one. Mm -hmm. I know. God has a way of confirming it, don't he? <laughs> I love when God works like that. Oh, it's like the Holy Spirit confirms the word, and you know it's true. Amen. I know this. Amen. And if we're ready, we'll go ahead and read this one. <clears throat> and unto the married I command, yet not I, but the Lord, let not the wife depart from her husband. But and if she depart, let her remain unmarried or be reconciled to her husband. And let not the husband put away his wife. But to the rest I speak, the rest speak I, not the Lord. If any brother hath a wife, and that believeth not, and she is pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. And the woman which hath an husband, that believeth not, and if he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Else were your children unclean, but now they are holy. But if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. And this is a good subject for you, Sister uh, Benita. I want to, I'm glad that it was brought up by Crystal. A brother or sister is not under bondage in such cases, but God hath called us to peace. For what knowest thou, O wife, whether thou shalt save thy husband, or thou knowest thou, O man, whether thou shalt save thy wife? But as God hath distributed to every man as the Lord hath called everyone, called everyone, so let him walk, and so ordain I in all churches. Is any man being called circumcised? <clears throat> let him not become uncircumcised. Is any called in uncircumcision? Let him not be circumcised. Circumcision is nothing, and uncircumcision is nothing, but the keeping of the commandments of God. Okay, a lot of people will say that divorce is a sin. Uh, there's two types of what they call approved divorce in the Bible. I will, I will. You hold on to that for a minute. 
you hold on to that one for a minute. I want to discuss this one first because this is very important. This people. But a lot of people will say, well, you're divorced. And, you know, and you can't remarry or anyone that remarries you is an adulterer. And you know where I'm coming from on this, Crystal. We've discussed this thousands of times and we had to research the word to find these answers. If that person that you are married to commits adultery, abuses you, and does not honor God, that is approval for separation according to God's word because he is not honoring God in honoring you as a woman. It is it basically, and a lot of people will fight me on this, but the fact is it is like you were never married before in God's eyes, okay? Yes, you may have children from that marriage, but if that man was unclean and unrighteous, that is acceptable for you to step away from him. If he's trying to kill you, that's definitely a reason to step away from him. It's not out of convenience that you got mad and walked out of his life. That's unforgivable. And that's what Paul and Jesus were talking about here, okay? I wanted that people to not think that God was going to condemn them if they had to get out of a bad marriage. Because a lot of preachers will preach on that and treat it like if you've ever been married before, you're going to hell if you remarry. And we've seen that, haven't we? Crystal. <clears throat> so people, that's what I wanted to make sure we were clear on, Jimmy, okay? Okay. Yeah, a lot of people don't tell you that. And they will beat you up because, oh, she wants to remarry this guy that works, that wants to honor her and cherish her and love her and accept her who she is. But she's already been married before. She's a harlot. He's committing adultery. He can't be part of it. No. Look at the background of the marriage. Okay? That's what I always tell people before jumping to that conclusion. Because you destroy a lot of souls when you jump to conclusions like that. And I've witnessed it. I watched a church die over it. A fellowship die over that. <clears throat> because they decided who could be married and who couldn't. Don't that sound familiar, Jimmy? Yeah. A lot of self-righteous hypocrites. <clears throat> So, ooh. and you said, what was that axe? No, I didn't say anything. Oh, no, the wife did. I'm just trying to see what she's talking about. Ephesians what? 521. Ephesians 521. I think we did read this one last week. Oh, yeah, submitting. But it's actually verse 18. I'm just letting you know context. Yeah. I know. It's called the comparable scriptures. But here, if we go ahead and look here, and be not drunk with wine where it is excesses. Excess. Ah. <laughs> Brother George getting tongue tied. But be filled with the spirit. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. What she just said there now, if you go to Proverbs 1 at 7, you don't have to go there. Uh, unless you want to verify it, but write it down. Okay. It's a very powerful confirm, uh, confirmation to this scripture. And that's, and I'll quote it and you guys can check it later. But it says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Hmm. So what does he mean by submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of the Lord? It's not you're in afraid of the person that you are submitting to, right? But it's a reverent fear that God can not only destroy the body, but he can destroy also the soul. 
So that when we hear the words fear of the Lord, it's in to be remain in reverence to God because of what his strength and his power is. Okay? Okay. It's not being a servant to each other in the sense that they have power over you and that they're your master. We are all equally submitting to one, one to another in God's word. There's no one higher than the next. And a lot of people will abuse that scripture, Crystal. I'll take it out of context. You want me to continue, don't you? She's over there wiggling her finger on her Bible. Keep going. <laughs> but let's look here. Because here comes the next part. Wives, submit yourselves unto your husbands, unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ has also loved. Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies, he that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth it and cherisheth it, even as the Lord, the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. And I believe there's more to this. I got to scroll. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. And you've, I, I, it's on video countless times, Crystal, and you could attest to this that you're not subservient to me, are you? You're not a slave to me. You don't have bow to me and wash my feet and constantly make sure everything's in a perfect place in this house for me. And that you silently obey. It's not what he means. Um, when he says a wife reverence the husband, it's respect. Just like our respect for God. She has so much love for God that she loves me because she loved him first. He's always first. See, God's always first. You're second. <laughs> yeah. If you guys could have seen that gesture she just did with her hand, it just kind of like talk to the hand kind of thing. <laughs> but it's exactly it. So that's the kind of respect that we should have for Christ and for the church. What do you think, uh, Jimmy? Yeah, sounds that's right. <laughs> As, as we get ready to close this one out tonight. Uh, uh, we're going to be doing one more on this study, Jimmy. Okay. Um, but we've already grasped that setting it apart, being set apart or sanctified means quite a few things, don't it? Yeah. Meditation. Husband prayer. And Husband and wife being sanctified as one in God's eyes. Uh, now I lost my place. <laughs> So set apart. Okay, but we're also married to the other brothers and sisters in Christ. Two types of marriage. That's what I'm trying to get at. Thank you. It just defined the two types of marriage. The marriage to Christ and the church as a whole. And the marriage to husband and wife. We've established that he gives us a process of being set apart. On how we live. Am I missing something there, Jimmy? No. And then I believe he also teaches us that we are marked for a purpose. And we haven't got to that part of the sanctification 
in its fullness. And I believe that's what we're going to talk about on the next week. Uh, Benita, do you have any questions? <clears throat> I know you're hiding over there. <laughs> no, it makes sense to me yeah. and how it all falls align. Yeah. So if you take last week's video, uh, last week's meeting that I recorded, you'll see how these are overlapping and crossing each other's path all the way through on sanctification. Is it's it's we talk and when Jason popped in, he asked about the Garden of Gethsemane and how Jesus sweated drops of blood. We also talked about that cross that Christ carried. And I believe I've said it was around 150 to almost 200 pounds. And people don't realize that's after him being beat, flogged with those metal razor tipped whip, bleeding, uh, rocks being thrown at him, spit at, people punching him, and he had to carry his cross. Ain't that a great analogy of being set apart? That he was willing to do that for you to be sanctified? A lot of people don't realize that. <clears throat> yeah. It brings it to a, a it brings the human aspect back in. Because I don't think I could carry a 150 uh, pound wooden cross up, up, up and down little hills Right now, I can't physically do it. Go ahead. Go ahead, Finger. Unmute your mic. I'll mute mine. Go ahead, Crystal. No, no, you can keep that card. No. By God's will, you did that. His love and God's will. No, that's the only reason. By his love and God's will. Ooh. Because I don't think, it, and how about when? Um, because if it was himself as a as a person and not with God, I don't think he would be able to carry that cross. I'm sorry. I, just, I don't think anyone could. And I had people tell his love for God to do that. Yeah. Say. Yes, God, I'm doing this for you because I love you this much. Yeah. And I love and these people, people that you have called out. Yeah. They have loved you so much. And that's a great analogy. Yeah. But everyone says, oh, he just carried the cross me. No, if you listen to how that was written and you read how it was written in the scripture, it says he carried his cross. Not just the cross beam. And some people go, oh, it was a stake he was put on. The Stavros or stick. They just, they took it out of context in Greek. Oh, but you see how we just, and this is the love of Christ for all of us, okay? Mm -hmm. That he sanctify us, sanctified us with his own blood. Mm. All right, let us, let us go ahead and bow our heads. I'm Jimmy. I'm going to pick on you again today. I'm going, to let, I'm going to ask you to close us in prayer tonight. Okay. Um, dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this time that we've had to come together and learn your word and strengthen each other. I pray for those, especially for those that aren't saved and for those that are ill and for those that just need extra comfort, Lord, for those contemplating suicide, for in those who are mourning the loss of loved ones. And I just give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Jimmy. Amen. Ooh, God. Erin, that's where I got that um, comment from last week of Holy Ghost bumps. See, and I need, I could sense it too, because every time it's like I hear a scripture, it's like that word concupiscence. I didn't know what it meant. And now, every time I see that, it's like the Holy Spirit's just, I just get touched every the last two times we Bible studied. I got a touch that I can't really explain it unless you get it yourself, you know? Yeah, it's called a Holy Spirit presence. And I'm on the, is this the Holy Spirit showing me I'm on the right path? So I'm grateful Amen. for that. <laughs> Amen. And that's the thing is where the spirit leads us, we go. And 
I will send that link to you again, Jimmy, and I'll send it to you, Sister Bonita, the 113 scriptures. Okay. Thank you. I have Spotify. it already. If you, I mean, I have it on my DM. You sent me a DM. Yeah, then it. did I send it to you, Sister Bonita? Mm, I don't think so. All right, wait, I'll send it to you today, Sister Bonita. Um, Thank you. Because that's a great study tool for you. You're welcome. Yep, and you're Yay. welcome. And then Crystal's added to it, and it's actually on the list, the ones that she shared. But um, it's definitely, we're going to do one more lesson on, um, one more study on sanctification. Okay. As a wrap up. And that way we can all kind of take notes and write down everything that we've learned. I believe that that's necessary. Um, and then we'll just, one of us will pick another study subject. I like that format. And that's a good way to do it is we're working on sanctification for three studies. And then we'll discuss it at the end of this next study where we want to go next. Okay. Okay. Sound like a plan there, Benita? Yes, it does. All right. Well, you guys have all, you all have a great evening and I want to thank you all for coming in. Thank you for everything and your time. Oh, it's just my time is, is for God, you know. Uh, yeah thanks brother george yeah same yeah you, you know we i count it all joy to be here for you guys and like i told brother jimmy on the first one and the last one um whether it's one person or a thousand i will teach the same scripture so it doesn't matter to me i just as long as there's two or more gathered in my name there am i in the midst jesus says but so i count it as a joy to study and learn together all right, you guys have a great evening. Have All a right. great evening. God bless you guys. All right. Good night. God bless. Good night. Good night. She heard you. <laughs> Good night, guys. <laughs>